Hey guys, welcome back to another Wave Shooter tutorial. It's tutorial number 9. And we're going to be setting it up so that the enemies will have a difficulty, so they'll spawn quicker the longer the game has been uh, on. So when you start the game, they're going to be spawning relatively slowly, and then enemies will start spawning in more and more, and you'll have a lot of enemies spawning in later. So we're going to be kind of setting up a difficulty curve to the game, and then we are going to be setting up a high score. So we're going to be using the difficulty curve system that a uh, Discord user used, I believe his username was Dave DeBomb. And then we're going to be using a high score system. I have a lot of you guys have already set one up, but for anyone that wants to have a high score system that hasn't set one up, we're going to set one up there. We might also set up a save system in the later tutorial that will save our high score that we have. So let's get into it. So we're going to be going into our arena script. I'm going to full screen this window. This is where the enemies are spawned and they're using this timer right here, enemy spawn timer. That timer is set to one second. So every second an enemy spawns. Let's set that up quite a bit higher. Let's do like three for the wait time. That way the timer will take longer to go off. Now every time the timer goes off. So what we're going to do is we're going to do dollar sign enemy spawn timer. because that's our timer. And we're going to do dot wait time multiply 0.0. 9.5. So what's basically happen happening here is if I pull out the calculator, we start off at 3, which is our original um, spawning time. And if we multiply it by 9 0 0.95, it goes down to 2.85. And you just keep doing that for every enemy spawn. And the timer is going to slowly go down, but it'll never actually hit 0. And you end up getting a difficulty system by multiplying the timer by 0 0.95. So we're gonna try this solution out. And you can see at the start, they're gonna be spawning pretty slow because it's taking them like three seconds. So they don't spawn in that much. The longer we keep playing, the more they'll spawn in. You can see we're having quite a bit more spawning in at once. We're actually getting quite a lot more. Yeah, there's a lot spawning in. So the problem with this, doing this solution, it works really well if you want a simple difficulty solution really fast. The problem is with using this is we are going to have a very weird diff curve. It's going to be exponential. So if I go to Firefox, I just show you an exponential curve. It's basically doing this to the difficulty where it's just going to ramp up and it's going to ramp up higher and higher. So this solution works really well, but as soon as you get pretty far into the game, you absolutely get destroyed by tons of enemies. So there's a couple of ways of fixing this. We can do another timer right here. If we add another timer, I can just try adding another timer and we call it um, difficulty. And if I set this to like every one second, um, I'm going to set it to auto start, timeout. We'll connect that to the arena. And every time this goes off, then we could say dollar sign enemy spawn timer dot wait time minus equals this way it's not exponential zero and what's going to happen though is since we're subtracting it instead of multiplying it it could reach zero and we need to make sure it's it won't so we need to do an if statement if enemy spawn timer dot wait time is greater than and then we tab this out this is a different system that will make sure that we don't get absolutely destroyed by a lot of enemies really quickly so now let's say we run it and a couple kills here and having them spawn a little bit more rapidly now they're spawning a lot more rapidly okay apparently 0 0.25 is not a good 0 0.5 let's try that and i can see they're spawning in quite a bit faster they're not going as fast as they were because now they're getting clamped to a certain value but it doesn't become overly impossible and you could definitely make it so it's more easy so it doesn't get very like insanely difficult when you get really high uh difficulty values so now we're gonna be setting up high score so that should be pretty easy let's duplicate our score label we're gonna rename this to high score and we're gonna set this at bottom left and we're gonna move it down quite a bit i'm gonna have it at the bottom and we're gonna scale it down quite a bit more have it a lot smaller than the original so let's go to our custom fonts let's set the size well actually you can see when i set the size of this custom font it's gonna scale the other font because they're using because it's their duplicates and they'll use the same dynamic font. so i have to clear this make a new dynamic font. Now we have to add our font data and it's this font.ttf file. We're gonna drag and drop that. I'm gonna set the size to like, I don't know, 124. Nah, that's too big. Uh, let's try 64. Eh. 
I think 64 should work fine. And you could just put that at the bottom. Um, I'm going to scale it up just a bit. There you go. You got your high score at the bottom. Now we need to program it so it's actually set correctly. Because right now it's just setting its text. So that we're going to have to add our own. We're going to have to add a new script. So remove the old script, the old score script, and add a new script, just high score.gd. And now we have our new high score script. Except we're going to need a separate variable for high score. So go back to global. And we're going to make a variable called high score. We're going to set that to zero. And in our high score.gd, we're going to do function underscore process delta. And we're going to do text equals global dot high score. Technically, you don't have to use process. We could just use underscore ready because we're only going to be updating it until you die. So let's just do that in the ready function. I think that'll be just fine. And in our high score, we'll do, we'll just create a process statement and we'll say if global.points is greater than global.high score, global.high score equals global.points. We also have another problem up here. This is an integer and we can't set that as a string because if we try to assign an integer integer to a string, it's going to give us an error. So to fix this, we could do string and then just put this in between. Now we could save it, run the arena, and now you see we have our little high score value. Let's make sure it works. And you'll see it won't update to your actual score until you die. Well, until the scene actually gets restarted, because then it will realize that. But now it's saying the high score is 70. So the reason why the variable doesn't actually get reset when the scene reloads is it's the same reason why we had to set the initial points value back to zero when the player dies. It's because it's in the global singleton and that singleton does not get reloaded when the scene reloads. So it'll actually store those variables through, which is kind of nice. So we have our high score system in the game and we have a difficulty ramp. I hope you guys like this tutorial and I hope you guys learned something new from it. And I'll see you guys in the next one.